I'm Pam Carey of Circante. I'll be your moderator today. Today, Sarah Emson, a digital marketing specialist at ABT Commercial, wows us with using engagement studio automations to create complex lead routing processes to sort leads and identify the hottest ones for sales. Take it away, Sarah. Hi, yes. So I'm quickly, Pam, if you want to help me figure out how to share my screen here. We good, Sarah? Do you need a little? Yep, yeah. yeah. If you want to help me share my screen, I don't necessarily see the button here. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh, the button is in the bottom center. Yeah. Ah. Uh, oh, there you go. There we go. Awesome. Thank you, Marcos. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Sarah. Awesome. All right. Yes. Yeah, so. Welcome everybody. I apologize for the quick technical difficulties there, um, but I'm excited to be here at now Mar Dreamin this year, and I hope you guys are all learning um, a lot already. So I'm here today um, talking about using Engagement Studio within Pardot um, for complex lead routing. Quick. Thank you to all of the sponsors, especially Circante and Salesforce for hosting us. Um, a little bit about me, I've been in digital marketing for over 10 years now. I, time has gone by so quickly. Um, but I graduated from Florida State University with a bachelor's degree in information technology. Um, so I do have a little bit more of a technical background, um, but all of my professional experience has been in the front end of marketing. So kind of got the best of both worlds going on there. Um, in 2021, just recently, a little over a year ago, I joined ADT Commercial and I am their marketing automation specialist. And then here you can see a quick picture of me and my family, all my little fur dogs there. Um, and missing from this photo is, is my new, my little newborn um, who I have not gotten a family photo of yet. So, um, but just a quick glance at us. So moving on to about ADT. So I work for ADT Commercial, um, but as y'all probably have heard of ADT before, um, we have over 150 years of history. We actually started in the 1800s as American District Telegraph. And here you can see this picture of this um, emergency call box. This is what we started out with back in the day before everyone had telephones in their houses. Um, to call police or fire or any kind of um, service that you needed. Um, that's where we started. Um, so from there, um, we have come a long way of after 150 years or so. And now we have what's called ADT Commercial. So this is just one of the sub brands of ADT. Um, it was created in 2019 just to solely cover the B2B commercial side of security. So as you can see here, we're nationwide. Um, we cover all different industries, um, you know, banking, retail, um, even some government. We, we cover all different kinds of industries and we have a lot of experts that know a lot of in-depth knowledge for all of those industries as well, which is really helpful, I think, because um, you know, having a retail space is going to have different security needs from like a government building or whatnot. So um, on our, you know, ADT commercial team, thankfully, we have all of those experts who have all that in-depth knowledge to really help all of our customers. Um, in addition to that, we have a wide offering of video monitoring, um, access control, fire alarms, things like that. So just like you would get with your, your regular ADT in your home, um, ADT is commercial is just more of a, a customized solution for, for larger businesses. So this leads me over to kind of my challenge working in marketing automation. Um, as like I said, I came on in 2021 and part of that is learning all about ADT commercial. And we discovered that 
about 85% of our business or our customers were returning customers. And this goes right along with the fact that, you know, we, we started in 2019. So we kind of adopted all of the B2B customers from your, your typical ADT. Um, so with that, all, you know, again, a lot of them were returning customers and it was a great way for us to get started. But at this point, you know, we're ready to grow. We're ready to uh, gain new customers, um, get new leads and, and kind of expand out. So that's the challenge, right, is, is getting us going and moving forward. So um, it started off with existing customers, word of mouth, one-to-one -one relationships. Um, a lot of our sales team was doing cold calling or, or just finding those, you know, those buildings that they just heard of needed security and, and giving them a call. So, um, but now moving away from that, you know, that's not necessarily modern marketing. So we want to implement some of our marketing initiatives and to do that, um, we, we had to work on uh, the requirements here. So looking forward to, you know, growing our company, um, making sure that we're not giving the sales team unqualified leads. Um, these were kind of the requirements that we put together. So we wanted to replace our inbound lead process. So as I mentioned, you know, starting in 2019, we adopted a lot of ADT's processes and legacy systems. Um, but now we're ready to grow into the B2B space a bit more, um, which does require different needs and different wants and desires and things like that that are more customized to the B2B space. So we had to kind of replace the lead process from the residential commercial or the residential side um, to fit more of that commercial company side. So um, in addition to that, some of the requirements for this were to be able to determine the sales readiness and also to be able to segment our lead types. So what I mean by this is, you know, is someone at the top of the funnel just learning about security options? Um, are they kind of in the middle where they're really looking in depth at solutions and what might be right for them and their company and their, their building or their business? Um, or are they ready right now to speak to a salesperson? Um, so we had to be able to, when we're getting in these new leads and this new process, we had to be able to determine at what stage, you know, they're ready to talk to, to someone or not. Um, and we did this by segmenting what we're calling our lead types. So we have our are nurtured, which is at the very top of the funnel. Um, very, we're marketing, nurturing them with, you know, drip campaigns, um, email series, articles, things like that. Um, then we have our marketing qualified leads. So once we've warmed them up and they're ready to go, um, th that is what we're calling our marketing qualified leads or MQLs. And then we have the very ready to go, ready to talk to someone. We have what we're calling our hand raised leads. So they literally raised their hand. They filled out a contact us form and they're saying, I want to talk to someone today. So that's how we're kind of segmenting. Um, but part of the, excuse me, automation flow that we have is we need to have some sort of identifiers for those, right? So that is one of the requirements. Um, and then in addition to that, within the ADT commercial world, we have different lines of business. So in ADT commercial, we segment on um, kind of three different ways. We have our national businesses, which is our largest um, customers. Um, they have nationwide locations, those kinds of things. We have our core commercial, which, um, you know, is businesses that may have a few locations or maybe like in certain regions of the United States. And then we have what we call our small businesses. So um, think of your local businesses, um, maybe one or two locations, things like that. So that's another way that we need to be able to segment in order to route our leads appropriately to the applicable teams that can handle those different lines of business. And then lastly, um, you know, again, having over 100 years of, of legacy systems and processes, we need to be able to kind of integrate our new process with some of the old processes that some of the other teams, like our sales team or our technical teams, um, may not be ready to, to move over to more modern systems yet. So we have to be able to have the data flow to and from those other systems as well, which was a very big technical challenge. 
So now onto the solution. This is where I came in um, and I worked with a lot of our IT teams and our leadership to really determine how do we want to accomplish those requirements? You know, how do we want to make this actionable? Um, so really we went in, you know, looking at Pardot. Pardot um, was our choice because we already had Salesforce for our CRM. And Pardot, as we all know, is very B2B focused. So that was pretty much an easy choice for us. Um, so using that platform, we decided to implement forms. So this is, um, you know, a big, big way for us to be able to identify those different segmentations that I talked about. Um, previously, we had just, you know, regular web forms, um, phone calls, things like that. But really, we wanted to streamline it to all come through Pardot in, in one way. So that's where we decided we're going to implement Pardot forms. Um, and then again, we needed to develop an automation to be able to segment these. And then once we did segment these audiences, um, how are we going to, like I said, push it through to different systems so that way different teams can handle those leads moving forward. And then integrating that, like I said, the technical side was so complex. Um, and I will be honest that our, our systems in our environment is very customized in that way. But, you know, I don't want to scare anybody off from trying things. I think that's part of this whole adventure that we've gone on is, is learning, um, you know, kind of how can you make things work for you and how can you get creative with the tools that Pardot has. So I definitely encourage you to try things, try, um, you know, thinking outside the box a little bit because I, I bet you'll be surprised at what really you can do with this system. So here's just one quick example um, that we have of my automation that I put together. It's a little complex, it's a little crazy, but um, it works. And we wanted to put it all in one place. So we have this all set up over in Engagement Studio. Um, we wanted it all in one place so that way we can really see what the customer journey is like from beginning to end. And that way, if we have to make changes or tweaks or, um, you know, moving forward, if we want to analyze it, we're able to do that all in one place. So here's kind of our pre-sales section, like I mentioned. So segmenting um, what is the nurtured side. So these are the people that maybe filled out a form for a webinar or filled out um, a form just to get an article or something like that. These people are going to just go through this top section right here. And then this side of the equation is our marketing qualified leads. So these are the ones that have been warmed up, have attended webinars, have uh, really looked into our solutions quite a bit more. Um, and a lot of these are determined actually by our scoring model. Um, and then last but not least is our hand raised side. And I think this is the most robust side of our automation. So these are the people that have Again, raise their hand, have said, I want to talk to somebody, and this is how we're going to be handling those leads as well. So we'll go into these a little bit more in depth here. So pre-sales, like I mentioned, these are the people that are being nurtured currently. Um, these are the ones that we're sending drip campaigns, advertising, those sorts of things. Um, we initially wanted to create this part of the process to be able to sync over directly with our Salesforce CRM. So that way we can utilize our Salesforce CRM as the single source of truth. We want to make sure that all of our data is all in one place, is all accurate, whether marketing is providing it or if our sales team maybe has, um, has some insights and whatnot, they can input that into the CRM as well and then I'll talk back to Pardot. So that way we're all on the same page. And then this also leads into us being able to control our kind of universal opt out for emails, which is a huge, you know, privacy thing. Um, and making sure that everyone is on board with with receiving our emails. So again, if if, you know, our sales team finds out that somebody doesn't want to be emailed, or even our regular ADT residential side, if they find out somebody doesn't want to be emailed to their work email, 
This is a way for us to have it all in one place, all within the Salesforce CRM. And for us to be able to push any incoming leads over to that Salesforce CRM, even if it's just someone that's nurtured or is just a marketing lead. So here you can see at the top, we have them come in. Um, we change a few of our custom fields here just to be able to identify, hey, this is a new lead coming in. Um, I do have a decision split here that um, if they're missing what we're considering their required information. So for us internally, it's like their email address is their unique identifier. We kind of need that. So if they're missing that, we're going to put them to the side and we're going to put them into a list. So that way then later on, we can ask them, hey, what's your email address? We, you know, we missed it. We didn't get it. Um, simple things like that that allow us to down the line have more of those marketing initiatives and marketing programs as well. And then we, again, push it over to Salesforce. And lastly, for this pre-sale step, we have this big decision split here. So basically, if someone is just at the very top of the funnel, they go through this, and then they're just going to go to the end. And we have this as a recurring automation. So, you know, over time, if they come back through again, they'll just keep going through this, and then that's it. They'll just sit here until they're ready to move forward with either speaking to someone if they're hand-raised, or if they're finally their score gets high enough that they're qualified and we think that they're ready to actually talk to someone. So that's what this last decision split is here, is are they ready to talk to someone? Are they raising their hand or are they qualified or do they just need to go to the end of the automation? So then we push over to that left side of the, of the process, which is what our marketing qualified leads. So if, Again, they've reached that score. Um, for us, it was a score of 100. Just trying to keep it simple. Um, but if they reach that score based on their activities and things like that, then they'll go through this side. So this is where we will take a look at their profile. We'll see, um, for us, for lead routing, we needed to have their zip code. So we have that here. We check, is their zip code empty? Um, if it is, again, we put them to the side and we ask them, hey, what's your zip code? Um, if not, which most of the time they do have a zip code, we'll move them forward and we'll have them start going through this lead routing process. So continuing down, um, we check if they're new or existing, if they're a new customer or if we have them in our CRM already. Um, if they're new, we'll go ahead and route them to someone new to a salesperson. We'll route them based on that zip code that we have. So that way it's someone local. And then we'll check their, their data in the form that they've submitted. So that will basically tell us our criteria for that segmentation that I mentioned at the very beginning. If they're the different lines of business, so if they're a national company, um, if they're our core company, or if they're small business. Um, so that way this is where we can finally identify you know, who they are, what teams they should be talking to, and where in the country they should be talking to those, their local um, stores as well. So we have that. And then on this side, on, on the left side, we have, um, if they are existing in our system, they are assigned to a salesperson. We don't want to take them away from that. So we just alert the salesperson saying, hey, this person, um, this lead has been very active. They've, you know, attended this webinar. They've uh, downloaded this white paper. So you might want to reach out to them and talk to them because it seems like they're potentially interested in buying something or adding on a new system. And that might be more revenue for us coming in. And now over to the hand raise side. So this, again, is somebody that's raised their hand, um, says, I want to talk to someone now, real time. Um, you know, I have a need for a solution that you guys seem to have. So this is where we really want to push forward with that urgency. So they come in. Um, I've identified up here that when they do raise their hand through some of our forms, as I mentioned, our forms are the big one at the very top. Um, we add them to a campaign. And that really is what tells us that they are hand raised. When they are part of a campaign with the success or the responded status, then we push them forward through this side. So again, we check their zip code to make sure that they are, um, you know, where they are in the country and that they're talking to a local person. And then we identify if they're new or existing. 
So if they're existing, again, we just reach out to their sales rep and say, hey, contact them today. Um, and we have those email notifications being pushed out through our Salesforce CRM. Um, but this automation process tells Salesforce, hey, go ahead and send that email to the sales rep. And then if they are brand new, if it's a brand new lead, brand new hand raise, um, they filled out our contact us form for the first time they're going to come down here and then this is really where we dive into that segmentation that i was talking about so again we we determine through their form fill outs um, whether or not their their um, line of business if they are a national customer if they're a core customer or if they're a small business customer and then as we determine that We'll funnel them down and we'll change their fields depending on uh, those criteria and what they match. Um, so in this case, you know, we would say with the uh, custom field of what their type is, we would identify if they're national, if they're core, or if they're small business. And that way then it runs through the automation um, and then pushes them over to our Salesforce CRM which then pushes them out to the correct sales rep um, or sales manager in that case, if there is not a sales rep. So that is kind of how we do it. That is um, the automation as a whole. And again, you know, it's, it's a little outside of the box, especially for an engagement studio. So um, just kind of thinking through that flow and how you could potentially use it. So moving forward, you know, uh, this is great and all, but it's not the end. We we want to continue to utilize uh, Pardot and, and our automations to improve. So what this will help us do is allow us to have more targeted marketing initiatives. You know, having all those different angles of segmentation and being able to get that data in from the very beginning is huge. That will allow us to be able to down the road, build out, based on, you know, what is their industry? Um, are they retail? Are they government? Are they, you know, anything, food and beverage, restaurants? Um, we'll know that information at the very beginning and be able to then target them with those direct messages. Um, and also where are they at in their funnel? You know, are they ready to talk to someone or do we just need to send them a white paper? Um, so then we really dive deeper and deeper into that personalized marketing and that really dynamic marketing. Um, additionally, we can further in integrate additional systems. So currently, like I said, we're integrating with our legacy systems, but moving forward, you know, Google ads and social media and things like that, as technology is always evolving, um, we're able to continuously integrate with those systems utilizing Pardot and um, optimizing our scoring model. So like I said, with uh, with our marketing qualified lead side, especially, um, we utilize our scoring model a lot and, and really tweaking what different um, activities people participate in um, is, is a really big point for us and being able to see those points where people are actually pivoting into being ready to buy um, will allow us in the future to optimize that scoring model. And overall, again, just having more in intricate customer journeys. So having all those segmentations kind of talk to each other and really create those different personas will allow us to, to grow in our marketing and, and kind of the end, it's, there's so many opportunities and so many ways that we can do that. So ultimately, um, what this has allowed us to do so far has, you know, given us more customer insights. Like I said, you know, we have all those new data points that we didn't have before. We we didn't have all the data points coming in from Pardot forms, but now we do. And this also gives our sales team more qualified leads. So Back to the very beginning where, you know, we had 85% of our customers are returning. This will allow us to have more of those new leads flowing in, um, less cold calling and more direct targeted relevant conversations, especially now that we know all these different segmentations where we might not have known them before. Um, so it allows our sales team to really hop on the phone and, and have a very 
a direct conversation instead of having those kind of discovery questions still. And then overall, better reporting and tracking. Like I said, you know, we, we've had uh, Salesforce CRM for quite a while and um, finally able to add Pardot onto that. And so now we're able to see the customer journey from beginning to end um, and being able to give back the ROI, which all of us, all of us marketers are looking to be able to uh, prove our uh, ROI, right? So this allows us to be able to do that, um, especially utilizing those campaigns and those member statuses. That's been um, a huge kind of learning curve for, for our team, as well as kind of a, a point that has allowed us to open up that tracking and the ROI reporting as well. Um, overall, it also allows us to reduce duplicate leads and accounts. Be, by integrating all of those systems, we're able to finally match up. Um, this person over here is the same person over here. So we're finally able to do that and clean up all of those duplicate messy data that everyone seems to struggle with. And then ultimately cross team awareness. So it allows marketing to be able to dive deep into who our prospects are. It allows our sales team to dive deep into them. Our technical teams are able to see everything everything's all together all in one place so it really allows company-wide support for us in our marketing initiatives as well um, and again ultimately setting us up for business growth right that's that's the whole goal here is growing not just relying on our returning customers um, but being able to grow having new people come in so that is all that I had um, I know it was very quick um, if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to throw them in the chat, send me an email, uh, hop on the LinkedIn and say hi to me. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. But again, I encourage you to think outside the box when it comes to Pardot and the way that you utilize it. Um, think, you know, how, how can we get creative with these systems and how can we make them work for us? Thank you so much, um, Pam. If there's anything else from you or any last minute questions, I know we still have like two minutes. So, yeah, and I, and I think we're we're technically at time. Um, we had a little, a little bit of a buffer zone, so I have captured all the questions that popped up in the Q and A tab, and I'll get them over to Sarah, and and hopefully you'll be able to respond to people maybe in the event platform and and get those questions answered. Um, but thank you so much. It was a great uh, show and tell of that really complex engagement studio. And um, just want to give a shout out to the Marjorie Min sponsors. You know, thanks to them, we're able to put on this awesome event. And um, enjoy the rest of your, your day, everybody. And if you're staying in this account engagement track, the next session is going to explore leveraging external activities. So go and learn some more. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you guys so much.